Okay, so in today's video, I'm gonna talk all about how I found out that I had autism at 25, man. I shouldn't have had that Popeye's spicy chicken sandwich, I'm out of breath. I just ran across the living room. Oh my goodness. Okay, so I'm gonna talk about how I got, how I found out that I had autism at 25. I got diagnosed around 26, 27, and I'm gonna go ahead and talk about um, the type of autism that I have with Asperger's, explain what Asperger's is, and now they're trying to change the name to high functioning autism, probably because Asperger's is the name of a Nazi, so I guess they wanna, you know, not have uh, Asperger's associated with the Nazi party. So. I'm gonna go ahead and talk about all this stuff and talk about how I was showing a lot of signs of autism early on in life and how that got all looked over back when I was younger and I was a kid and stuff. So at 25 years old, I had a girl I was dating, my girlfriend that I had for three years and she was telling me, she was like, she was like, oh, Reginald, you act just like my best friend's younger brother. I guess she used to babysit her best friend's younger brother and he has Ashburgers. And she was like, you guys act the exact same, except he has like zero motivation to do anything. And you're just like super motivated to do stuff all the time. So that's kind of like the first time in my life where I was told that I had Asperger's or autism. I actually believed it. Before that point, I had a mentor in LA. So I was living in Long Beach, California. So Long Beach, that's about 30 minutes south of LA. And I was living out there, chasing my dreams of becoming a filmmaker. And I had a friend get me a mentor and I was super excited to have this guy mentoring me because when I was younger, I wanted to go to school and become a music composer. So I used to play a lot of musical instruments. I played like 11, 12 music instruments back when I was in high school. And I met this guy through one of my friends who was a good friend of his. And this guy was like, he was in the industry. He did the soundtrack for Anchorman. He did the soundtrack for Talladega Nights. Now he had, you know, like TV show after TV show that he was writing the scores for and doing the, the composing for the music for all these shows. And I was like, man, you know, I need this guy in the industry, you know, be my mentor, help me out in life. So luckily he needed a cameraman like me. So he needed a cameraman because he wanted to do a TV show pilot. Well, he didn't want to do a TV show pilot. He wanted to do a TV show sizzle. Now, if you don't know what a sizzle is, uh, I think everybody knows what a pilot is. The pilot is the first episode of a TV show. A sizzle is a really short version of the pilot, so maybe people don't have enough money to shoot a whole first episode, because the first episode can be a few hundred thousand dollars to shoot. If you want to just do a little short, you know, like five, six, eight minute segment, that's called a sizzle, a really short, a really cheap, just video you can put together so you can, you know, pitch the TV show and get it picked up. Okay, so this guy right there, he was telling me, he was like, Reginald, you know what? I think that you might be autistic. <laughs> what? Bro, what are you talking about, man? <laughs> and when he told me, he was like, I think you might be autistic. I was, I was insulted. I was offended. Coming from like the black community that I come from, you know, black people don't know too much about autism. So when he told me I might be autistic, in my head, I was just thinking back to, you know, in, in high school, in elementary school, in middle school, you know, the autistic kids, you, you know, they'd be on like the short bus, they'd be acting all crazy. They'd be like, you know, slapping themselves. They'd be attacking people at school, even though I was always cool with the autistic kids back in school. You know, and I'm not, I went to school in the hood. So you, we had a few autistic people at our school that would go run after people and, you know, attack them. And then, and then whatnot, just because, you know, they got that difficulties with, you know, social interaction. And, and, and some of them autistic people got their eyes dotted, you know, a little pop pop, a little Floyd Mayweather action <laughs> towards the special needs, special needs kids just because my school was a little hood and a little ghetto. So I, I was thinking back to like, like that kind of autism. And he was like, and you know, when I he saw me get like kind of upset when he was like, I think you might be autistic. He was like, he was like, oh no, no, not like, not like you're retarded or nothing like that. He was saying autistic. He was like, he was like, oh, I forget which autism form it is where you might be more like a like a genius or something. You're good with math, good with numbers or something. He was referring to Asperger's. Uh, but he couldn't put a name on the actual title. So a few years later after that, I started dating a girl. And like I said before, she had babysitted somebody with Asperger's. So when she was dating me, she could see that we were exactly the same. Even though she probably didn't know the signs, she was just like, you guys both act the same, talk the same, respond the same situations. And after that point, I went ahead and I 
went online and I took me a little, you know, self-evaluation autism test just that I found online. And after going through this test, I think they said on this test, if you scored like a 50, then uh, no, it, the score, you know, it's a, it's a questionnaire, had like 50 questions on the questionnaire. It was like, if you scored higher than 30, you're probably autistic. And I took this test <laughs> and after I took the test, my score was like, 47 or like 46 so it was like way higher than 30 which is like people over 30 are considered you probably you're likely somebody autistic so i almost got a perfect <laughs> on this score for like autism and i was like oh my goodness i think i might actually be autistic <laughs> autistic at this point after that point i hired a therapist for autism and we went through and did like a more official diagnosis test thing and she was like yeah your test results have come back and you are in fact <laughs> autistic and have asperger's and when that moment came, it was such a relief. Because going through life with somebody with autism or with Asperger's, you do feel completely different from everybody else. One of the traits of having Asperger's is it's extremely hard to relate with other people. And since, prob since I think around only 1% of the population does have Asperger's or autism, you can just, you know, like 99% of people I just like don't relate with and they feel totally foreign to me. At some points in life, I felt like I felt like everybody else was just robots. I was like, am I the only like real person out here? Everybody else just feels like a robot out here because I can't relate to anything else that people are saying to me or expressing or any of that kind of stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and explain what Asperger's is. So autism itself, the word autism comes from the Greek word autos, which means self, because when they first, you know, around the 40s and 50s, when they first were discovering uh, autism as being, a, you know, just a different way of thinking that people had, uh, they noticed that all of these kids that they were working on that had autism, they all just loved being by themselves so much. So remember when you hear the word autism, that comes from the Greek word autos, because people just love being by themselves so much. So when they were first going through and talking about, when they first like found people as being autistic, here it says the date, like 1911, so I guess a little bit earlier. So autism was first introduced in 1911 by Eugen Bleuler, a Swiss psychiatrist who used it to describe schizophrenic patients who appeared disconnected from the outside world. And he also used it to characterize individuals with a certain social withdrawal. According to the U.S. government, Ashburgers is an autism spectrum disorder characterized by impaired social skills and repetitive or restrictive patterns of thoughts and or behavior. A child with Ashburgers may develop an obsessive interest in one narrow subject area and be completely unaware that the rest of the world does not share this interest and difficulty modulating the volume and tone of his voice. That was just one definition that I found. I really thought, you know, like hit the nail on the head on what autism is. So a lot of autistic people, you know, are really socially awkward and may have like delayed social skills. I think when kids are growing up, they develop social skills pretty quickly throughout elementary school and middle school. But for people on the spectrum, uh, being social is just a bit harder and a bit more work. Not saying that people can't be on the spectrum and be very, you know, good in social situations. They just have to work a bit harder to get up to, you know, the same speed as everybody else. So one of the other things on the list was they were talking about people have people on the spectrum have a hard time uh, putting different tones in their voices and yes people on the spectrum can be very monotone i know when i was young i was extremely extremely monotone and they also said that people on the spectrum that they can have hobbies and interests that kind of you know just over that kind of just take over their life and they become extremely focused on uh on one task at a time. So when I first found out that I was autistic, I wanted to look around and see who else was autistic. And I found a list of celebrities that were all autistic to, you know, make me feel better about the diagnosis that I had just gotten. I'm actually making history tonight as the first person with Asperger's to host SNL. That's because I don't always have a lot of intonation or variation in how I speak. So I won't make a lot of eye contact with the cast tonight. <laughs> Celebs with Ashburgers would be Jerry Seinfeld, Elon Musk, Nikola Tesla, Andy Warhol, Sir Isaac Newton, Steve Jobs, Michelangelo, Mozart, Albert Einstein, and Bill Gates. Now, a lot of these people are just rumored to have Ashburgers. 
I remember I would watch interviews with Elon Musk and I could just tell by how he talked that he most likely was somebody on the spectrum. And then a few months ago, straight out the horse's mouth, Elon Musk on Saturday Night Live was like, was like, hey everybody, it's me, Elon Musk. I'm the first person on SNL Live to host a show that is on the autism spectrum and the first person on here with Asperger's that I know of. So it was cool to see that there were people out there that were achieving enormous success through Asperger's and I also started to read books about Asperger's and one book that I read was written by an author who was working in Silicon Valley and he thought it was strange that a lot of these really really successful people <laughs> that were running these tech companies uh, he would go to their house to do business interviews and they would all say oh you know what my kids have autism and they have Asperger's because Asperger's is a um, is passed down through the genes so when the parents have Asperger's then you know it's likely that the kids are also going to be on the autism spectrum so he found that a lot of people that are really successful and running tech companies a lot of them also had Asperger's and they said in Silicon Valley that people thought that Asperger's and autism was almost a necessity to achieve great success in the tech field because people with autism are just so good at numbers and math and that's because people on the spectrum become obsessed over their interests and over hobbies so if somebody's interested in math and in science and they're on the spectrum they really don't like being around people they can isolate themselves and be fully immersed and fully emerged in that thing that they love to do and that's definitely the case for me i'm somebody that likes to be isolated from everything and everybody else and just be totally consumed with whatever i got going on so next i'm gonna go over some signs that i was on the spectrum uh, pretty much from the time that I was about four or five years old up to the time right now because like I said I come from like the high school I went to was 85% black and my parents are black of course and in the black, black community we don't pay we, we got worried about autism we worried about paying the bills we worried about keeping the lights on we, we I'm like you know some of that stuff kind of luxury when you just fighting your family fighting to stay on track with bills we ain't got we can't afford, we can't afford a therapist or psychiatrist or nothing like that so like I said for a lot of you know black families you know they not too hip they not too hip on you know uh, you know, mental stuff and uh, and mental, you know, health things and all that stuff. So, here are the clear signs. <laughs> all these trying to mention some clear signs that I was somebody that might have been on the spectrum. So, kindergarten. When I was in kindergarten, I flunked kindergarten. I was held back in kindergarten. So basically, what my teacher told my parents is they were like, your kid comes to school, he doesn't talk to anybody. We don't think he's ready to be a first grader. So because I had a delayed you know, social development, I wasn't talking to nobody, they held me back, which sounds crazy. They still sound crazy to me. But yeah, I got held back in kindergarten. I had to take kindergarten twice because they didn't think I was socially ready. They didn't think I was socially ready for the first grade. And then all throughout the rest of high school, I was like a whole year older than everybody else, which you know, it came in handy for sports. For sports, I had a whole nother year <laughs> to like develop physically. So, I mean, that was, that was great. Okay, and then uh, I did kind of have, okay, and then the next point, I kind of had some like delayed uh, social, like not, I wouldn't say social skills, but delayed like speech skills. So when I was talking, when I was younger, I would talk with a lisp. I had a really hard time pronouncing the right kind of S words. So I pretty much, whenever I would talk, I would get my S's mixed up. Instead of saying the S, like the S sound, I would get it mixed up with SH, like shh. So S and shh. I couldn't distinguish between the two. And I remember one time when I was young, I was trying to say, because I was out at like Chuck E. Cheese, and I, was, I spent the whole day playing, and I sat down, and I was really tired. And I was like, whoa, after playing this whole day, I need to take me a nice long sit. Like, S-I-T, S-I-T, I was tired. I was like, I need to just sit down for a long time. But what I said was, I was like, I'm tired. I need to take me a nice long S-H-I-T because I always got the two S's mixed up. Uh, <laughs> my dad like turned and snapped at me. He was like, boy, what you just say? <laughs> so that was like a funny story I had about getting my S's mixed up. Okay, and then going into like middle school and high school, I would be talking to people and people would tell me they would have a hard time understanding what I just said, even though to me it felt like I was speaking very clearly. But I guess as I was speaking with like a lisp and just, you know, 
trying to rush. What I found out the issue was I hated talking to people so much. I would just talk really, really, really fast, trying to, you know, just get out of that social. I mean, every social situation, every time I had to talk to people was just so extremely uncomfortable. I would just talk twice as fast. That way I could go ahead and get the words out. I could just say what I had to say and then get up out that social situation. So I would talk really, really fast. I would slur my S's and I would be extremely hard to understand when I was when I was younger and growing up. I mean, like now I talk like better than I did when I was younger, but that's because I noticed my speech was really bad, so I would spend time talking to people on TV shows. No, I would talk to news anchors. I met some news anchors, asked them, how can I become better at speaking? So they recommended that I read books out loud. I would talk to actors on how to become better at speaking. They recommend reading scripts out loud. So when I was around 20, 21, I started reading books out loud and I started reading scripts out loud, like some Will Smith scripts, movie scripts, TV show scripts, you know, just anything that was entertaining. I would put on some headphones, put myself in front of a microphone and record myself talking so that I could get my speech to a, you know, just a level that I felt comfortable with. So that's why now I kind of just speak normally back, but when I was younger, my speech was really rushed and I was trying to, you know, just to get away from people and to get out of social situations as quick as I could. Okay, so earlier in the video when I was naming people that were famous for like being on the spectrum like Einstein, Mozart, it's rumored that, you know, autistic people can be extremely good at math, science, technology, and music. So when I was in school, I played 11 different instruments. I started off with the clarinet. And then in band, I branched out and started, you know, picking up different instruments. Like I learned how to play the, the baritone, I learned how to play the trumpet, I learned how to play the saxophone, I learned how to play the guitar, the double bass, the French horn, uh, the piano. Actually, I learned the piano, how to play piano first. And I still like playing piano. I wanted to become a music composer. I wanted to go to school and study music composing and become a composer. But basically, all my friends and everybody talked me out of it. They're like, oh, you go to school for music, you're going to be broke forever. You're already good at math. Just do engineering so you can actually make some money in your life. So I got talked out of composing and went into engineering. And I was really, really, really good at math. When I was in school, my school district had about six to 7,000 students in the school district. And I was the number one student in mathematics. When I took my ACT, or if you're in a different part of the country, SAT, I got a perfect on the math portion of my ACT. And this is at a school, at my high school, the average ACT score at my high school was a 14 and a half. I remember they put a, out a news, there was a news article about my high school for having the lowest ACT scores in the entire state of Missouri. So they put out this like, they put, they put out this study saying how trash my school was at the ACT. And yet I was, I had a perfect score on the math portion of my ACT and could pretty much go to any, uh, could pretty much go to almost any, you know, engineering school of, of that kind of nature. So... So basically, that's how I felt like I felt I fit in the criteria of being like extremely socially awkward. I hated talking to people. And like I said, I would just talk super fast. That way I wouldn't have to talk to people for very long. And I probably still do the same thing to this day. It's just not as bad because I spent time actually working on it. Uh, but yeah, that's how if you know somebody that <laughs> and you think they might be on the spectrum if they're like extremely socially awkward and you see them kind of get consumed with their interest and they'll be interested in something and they'll just talk to you and they'll just keep on talking to you about it and they'll just keep on going and going and going about their interest and they can't talk about nothing else. That would definitely be some signs that they might be on the spectrum. And then I think that all people on the spectrum hate small talk. Small talk will give me an anxiety attack. I avoid small talk at any at any cost in my dodging and avoiding small talk. Growing up, I think I never really had any best friends to this day. I really never had a best friend. I just love being, you know, isolated and away from people. I think when I was in high school and college, everybody wanted to go to parties. They wanted to go to clubs. They wanted to hang out. They wanted to chill. Everybody just seemed like they wanted to just, you know, congregate in groups of people at different social events and social gatherings. But that was never me. I hate, I hate clubs. I hate parties. I hate social events. I hate going out. Look, I just like, I'm a hermit. I, I love being at the house cut off by myself. That's when I'm my absolute happiest is when I'm just isolated by myself. So 
now the whole, you know, everybody, and like I was saying, I feel a lot, felt a lot different from other people because everybody just seemed like they wanted to spend so much time together. And I'm over here like, please leave me alone. <laughs> I ran track and field for a reason, individual sport. And I think that's why, I, that might be one reason why my diagnosis came later. I could probably um, attribute my diagnosis coming later in life because of two things. One, because I'm, you know, I'm black and I lived around a bunch of black people and we don't know nothing about autism. And then the other thing was I was athletic. I was in shape. I was good at sports. So people probably don't associate autism and, you know, having a six pack at the same time. Because normally when people think of autism, they think of, you know, little, you know, little short, awkward looking white boys is when they think of autism. That's what they normally think of. And here I am. I'm the number one track and field athlete in my state. I got like 40, 50, four rides to the college for being so good at track and field. Uh, sitting at my house, I got schools mailing me all the time. Division one coaches calling me all the time. I got five years of free college on the table because I was so athletic and so good at sports. And also really good at math. So it was, it was a combination of like the, 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 good, the good math scores and the good, the good at sports. Guaranteed me to have free college. So, so yeah, I think that was some of the things that kind of covered up the fact that I might be autistic even though I was still extremely socially awkward, uh, I was in shape and I had lots of friends that played sports. I had a lot of friends that played music. And just going back and talking about the, uh, the obs ob obsessive nature of autism, you really become disconnected from the world and just focus in on one specific topic. For me, I spent eight years of my life being extremely focused in on music. Uh, I was learning all the instruments. I was studying music every single day. I was competing in music competitions. I was going to state in music and I really, really didn't do anything else. And then when I got into sports, it was the same thing with sports. When I got into track and field, track and field just like took over my life. I talked about track all the time. In my spare time, all I did was watch track and field videos. I'd be reading articles on track and field, reading books, talking to coaches on track and field. It just consumed my life. And then now, so then I went to video and then video consumed my life. And I've been doing video for like six, seven years now, and it's been a blast and a lot of fun. So um, if you think that somebody that you care about, because I think most people watch this video won't be kids, they'll probably be older. So if you're an adult and you think that somebody that you know might be on the autistic spectrum, then one thing that you can do or things you can notice is see do they have, you know, delayed speech and social issues? Do they get a lot of, you know, anxiety? Do they, do they get angsty? Do they get uh, nervous around people? Do they, you know, have a hobby that they're obsessed with? Because for a lot of autistic people, their, you know, interest may not be something that we would consider to be uh, something that can be, make them successful. Like for Elon Musk, his interest is like, technology and science something that pays a lot of money or for somebody that you know maybe their interest is computer science so they're autistic and they're obsessed with computer science and coding that's something that's very lucrative not everybody on the spectrum is going to have you know an interest topic for them that is something that's lucrative somebody might be interested in dinosaurs they might know everything about there is to know about dinosaurs or maybe they're super interested in trains or maybe they're super interested in boxing. I, I met one girl and she was telling me that her brother is also has Asperger's and she said that, but her, his bro, her brother's interest is boxing. He just loves everything about boxing. He can talk about boxing all day. He's horrible at talking to girls. He's horrible at talking to people in general. But when he, he, when he meets somebody that likes boxing, he can go all day talking about boxing and stuff. So the interest could really just be anything and uh, just see when they're super interested and they seem kind of disconnected, like they're off in their own little world, then they might be somebody that is on the spectrum. And if you think they're on the spectrum, you could, you know, tell them like, look, I think you might have Ashburgers, but put it in the way, be like, you might have Ashburgers, but it's like geniuses have Ashburgers. You could be like Einstein, the world's richest man, you know, Seinfeld, you know, all these people have Ashburgers. I think if you look into it, it may help you out. Because I know finding out that I had Asperger's definitely helped me because I could go and I could read books about other people with Asperger's and learn how they could, you know, respond to different situations. And it has honestly made my life way easier to go through knowing now that I'm on the spectrum and I have Asperger's. Because now when I go out to social events, 
Uh, I could, you know, I could go out with maybe some headphones or something. That way the social event isn't so <laughs> overwhelming. If it gets to that point where it's just super overwhelming, I can just pop on some like noise cancellation headphones and now I'm chilling and I'm not about to have an anxiety attack. Or if I'm out somewhere, you know, maybe I need like a book or something, you know, just, just to take my like mind off of uh, the social pressure of being out and around people. So just knowing how I operate, I can respond and just go through life a lot more relaxed and not have meltdowns and shutdowns. I really have really bad shutdowns where if I'm trapped amongst people, I will just leave. I've been in business meetings with people and I'm like, this, this, this the social atmosphere. There's too many people in here talking, too much small talk. I'm going to have an anxiety attack. I'll just walk out the building. I don't, just sometimes I'll just walk out of the building and just walk like three, four miles down the street just to get away from social environments. There's been times I've been in cars with people at a red light and I'll just jump out the car at a red light because I can't take the small talk and the, all the, the social stuff going on. It just feels like, I, don't, I feel like I'm about to die because the social, social stuff gets too bad. So uh, if you know somebody that you think might be on the spectrum, go ahead, like I said, just tell them about all the famous successful people that might be on the spectrum and that's gonna help them understand why they're having a hard time in social interactions and you can give them a test online. I'm gonna put a link below for the test. They can take this test and find out all the info that they, and find out if they're actually on the spectrum or not for free. You ain't gotta pay no money. So uh, that's this video. Stay tuned for the next video. Hopefully it ain't take three, four months for me to upload another one. But if it does, then I'll see y'all later.